Hello and welcome to the QA Underground. In today's video we will be covering part 4 of our 4 part series on XUI tests in the Swift language. Today's topic will be covering native performance testing within Xcode. In our previous videos we covered how to add XUI tests to an existing Xcode project, how to create a page object model testing architecture using the XUI tests, and how to add accessibility identifiers to elements. Today's video will cover native performance testing within Xcode. We will achieve this by creating a performance test method, adding a measure block, both a default and one with options, and then calling an existing XUI test within the measure block. We will then run the performance test and review the results. Before we get started, if you enjoy this style of content, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button down below. And with that out of the way, let's get to the steps. To start, the first thing we want to do is create our performance test class. Within tests, right click test, new file, add a new Swift file, select next. I'm going to call this performance UI test. First thing we need to do is import XE tests. Then we're going to call our class performance UI tests. We're going to extend that to the XE test case. Within our block, we'll do an override function setup as we've done previously. We'll call super dot setup. Within that setup block, we will pass continue after failure equals false. Then we'll do XCUI application dot launch. And then we'll create an override function teardown. We'll leave that blank for now. And now we can create our performance test method. So we'll call it function test general calculator performance. Within that block, we're going to use the measure block, which is our performance block. So anything inside this measure block will be measured for performance. So we're going to call our XUI test that we created previously. So we're going to call number select tests dot test select all buttons. And this is again, just a normal XUI test that we created previously. We're going to actually save. Go to our test view. As you can see, we have our performance UI test class down here. We'll hit run. Looks like I have an error here. Oop, I had extra curly brackets there. That's my bad. So I'll just remove those. I'm going to fix the formatting here for aesthetics. I'm going to save that. I'm actually going to rerun. Okay, so as you can see, it's launched the application. So again, it's going to perform the actions of the test 10 times in a row. And basically what that is for is that it's going to create an average across the 10 iterations that it runs by default. So now the test has completed. So if we go here, we can click this. It will show us our average time. As you can see, it says no baseline has been added. So we can select set baseline. We can um, accept the baseline that was automatically generated. Or we can enter our own baseline. I'll enter one second here and then we'll rerun it and see how the average does against the baseline. It should fail because I'm setting it for one second and the average last time was 1.82. So we'll run it again. Okay, and as expected, it has failed because it did not meet our baseline. And as you can see, it actually says it is 72% worse th than average. So this can be very valuable even in low level load testing 
as you can see if your performance worsens or gets better as you're adding features to the application. So now we can move on to the next test method and we're going to call that function test calculator performance metric options. So basically this is going to be using the same measurement block that we used before but we're going to actually pass metric options. So to do that we're going to do let metrics XCT metric and then we're going to set that XCT metric to equal the metrics that we want to actually track. So for this example, we're going to do XCT memory metric. XCT storage metric. And XCT clock metric. Now we're going to create a let for measure options equals XET measure options dot default. Next, we're going to set our iteration counts. So we'll do measure options dot iteration count equals, let's say three. And now we can use that measure block that we used above and we're going to pass in those metrics and measure options. So we'll do measure inside there. We're going to pass metrics and we'll pass our metrics that we set above and then we will pass in our options, which will be our measure options that we set above as well. So the rest is the same as before. We'll just pass in our XUI test. Number select tests dot test select all buttons. And now we should have our test run iteration. So I'm going to save that file and run our new test method. So what should happen here is it will run three iterations instead of 10 and we'll store the metrics that we told it to store. And there it is done. So we go in there, we can see that it has stored the metrics that we told it to. And with that, we have completed part four of our four part series on XUI tests using the Swift language. In today's video, we covered native performance testing. We created a performance test method, added the measure block, a default and one with options, and then called an existing XUI test from within the measure block of the performance test method. We then ran the performance tests and reviewed the results. Let me know if you like this style of video by hitting the like button down below. And if you are not already a subscriber to our channel, but enjoy the content, I'd encourage you to hit the subscribe button on the way out. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you on the next video.